Hey, what's up, everybody? This is D. Welcome back to the channel. And as promised, we're going to have a little discussion as I clean my filthy glass. And what we're going to talk about is dosing these chemicals. If I go into another pet store and see another person buying a zillion dollars worth of chemicals, I'm going to drop dead right on the spot. So let me whip out my trusty scraper and let's get into the discussion. All right. From this moment on, you will now be known as Sharkbait. Sharkbait! Ooh ha ha! Welcome, brother Sharkbait! Sharkbait! Ooh ha ha! Enough of the Sharkbait! Sharkbait! Ooh! For today's video, as I clean my tank, we're gonna talk about dosing. And the most popular methods of dosing are by using products such as Bionic or Bulk Reef Supply 2 Part. Now, both of these companies make kits that come with two bottles one that manages the alkalinity level of the tank and the two which manages the calcium portion of the tank now it's important to know that as you raise the alkalinity levels the calcium levels go down and this balance must be kept in order to assure that the corals can build their calcium skeletons by the uptake of calcium in the water column so once again as the alkalinity goes up the calcium typically goes down so it's important to test for both of these levels and to create a balance in the tank it is this balance is which is going to assure that your corals will be able to grow and thrive so before you do anything, first, know what your current levels are. And there's no way to know what the current levels are unless you test. So test your tank before you make any changes. I would also advise when you're mixing new water, test the water before you add it to the tank so that you know what the base alkalinity levels are as well as the calcium levels are and to first know what your target should be the typical target is between 8 and 10 but it can vary the most important thing is to be consistent you can do perfectly well with your reef tank whether the levels are spot on some people have ph's that are under eight some people have alkalinity that has under four or five but be consistent watch your corals and they will tell you when you are doing the right thing so with that being said let's get into testing and what the tools are that we need to test get a reliable test kit the most popular ones that I use or the ones that I use are made by Red Sea. I do use API, which were very affordable and very easy to come by, but I like the Red Sea test kit in particular because it tests for both pH and alkalinity in one shot. Now, if you want to go a little further and spend a few bucks, you cannot go wrong by using the HANA checker. Now the HANA checker tests specifically for alkalinity. You can get ones that test pH and everything else, but I like it because it gives you a number. I can write the number down on a piece of paper and I can track it down to the decimal point. Whereas the Red Sea, you have to match the color and the color can be a little more trickier to uh, monitor. But both of these things do come into play, but when you're testing, you might want to start by testing phosphate and nitrate. I'm not going to get into those in this discussion, but when people start seeing algae and everything, it will be a result of higher nitrate levels and phosphate, not always talking about the alkalinity, but my hydrometer is also my best friend. My hydrometer is used for testing my salinity and specific gravity, but a lot of people when starting out in the hobby in the hobby in the hobby will use a hydrometer which is this thing here the hydrometer is tricky because if you don't clean the hydrometer you see how that needle sticks it can throw off your reading so if you are using a hydrometer instead of this refractometer make sure you clean it now we're going to skip the mix and we're going to get right down to the testing of the frag tank and now for this test, it'll show that my alkalinity is currently 5.8. Now, 
You may say that's low, but based on my consistent levels of my frag tank, I am always, always usually between 5 and 5.9. Now, if you look at the salt mix that I use, which is Red Sea Coral Pro, it'll show that your levels based on this salt start out at 4.3. And because I'm dosing my tank, I'm raising it above that 4.3. So I know that my levels are always usually within that little range. Now, where the refractometer and the hydrometer come in, as I'm mixing my salt for water changes, I keep my gravity and salinity at 1.025, which is recommended for SPS corals. Now, if you look in this chart here, the salinity will be in that 35 parts per thousand, but since I keep mine a little bit higher, my pH is in that 8.9, 8.10 level so it is lower than the alkalinity in this chart now if you look at the hydrometer you'll see that if you have a salinity of about 1.026 which mine is a little bit in that 35 level that your ph will be somewhere in that 8.2 and somewhere in this 1.025 range so it is not an exact science but these are numbers that you need to keep track on before you start dosing so that you know what the difference will be between what your salt mix is and what your target alkalinity is. So different salt mixes have different pH levels and different alkalinity levels. So please take a minute to look at your salt mix. Take a minute if you're using Instant Ocean or if you're dosing uh, any other calcium or alkalinity metals such as what I have here is my little bulk reef supply alkalinity mix or you may be using a Kent liquid calcium. You want to test what your water parameters are based on what you're using to dose your tank. I can't express that more. With that being said, let's summarize what it all means. So we start with part one, which is alkalinity. Now what your alkalinity does is dosing alkalinity raises the pH of the tank. Now once again, as your alkalinity goes up and your pH goes up, your calcium levels are going down because the raising of those two other factors aid in your corals ability to take up calcium from the water now as the calcium levels are dropping and being utilized by the coral this is where you see coral growth and this is where you see coral color so now you're dosing to assist in the coral and plants ability to take up the calcium and nutrients from the water column so calcium is being used and alkalinity and the pH are being changed by this. So once again, alkalinity, pH go up, the calcium is being used by the corals and this results in happy corals. Now there are other factors which adjust pH. And this is where I think people get really confused and where things start to go wrong. Fish and invertebrates, just by their living mass, fish use the bathroom, fish lay waste, and the food detritus and nutrients will also affect the pH. Carbon dioxide that the fish breathe out create ammonia and the ammonia nutrients and waste in the water column will lower your pH. So a lot of the times when people see the pH constantly dropping, it's usually by a result of the cycling of the tank. And now the more fish you have in the tank, the harder it will be to maintain the pH or the higher the dose you may need of your alkalinity in order to keep that pH up. But once again, if you have a high fish load, it's going to put a strain on your coral's ability 
to absorb calcium from the water because your corals will be constantly fighting the nutrients for the intake of the calcium. This is why people end up with a high amount of algae on the tank. Like I see algae on my tank, I know it's because my dosing is going up and down. And also one thing people don't take under consideration is the cleanup crew. You say, hey, I got a lot of algae, so I start adding crabs and snails. Well, guess what? Crabs poop, snails poop, and they also contribute to the ammonia level in the tank. So as you're adding animals to the tank to combat one problem, you're actually creating another problem, which is fighting and chasing the pH. Now, the more of these things fight and struggle, the more unhappy coral you have. Now you're saying, well, why am I coral unhappy? Is because there are so many other factors that are fighting the coral from being able to absorb calcium and nutrients from the tank. And this is what leads to what they call old tank syndrome. So here we have alkalinity, pH, and calcium. The wrap up of all of this is, establish a healthy balance in the tank by starting off slow plan your setup stick to one bio load and give your tank a chance to cycle do not try to rush it do not try to band-aid it you have to watch your tank for changes there's no shortcuts do not buy a whole bunch of chemicals like fos x and all of these things to try to tackle problems nothing fixes the problem quick. You have to do your due diligence and establish balance. There are no shortcuts in the tank, no shortcuts in the hobby. And if you want a happy tank, happy fish, happy coral, without spending a ton of money, take your time and watch your tank and test. This is all you have to do. I can't reiterate it enough take your time test your tank and as you dose you will see a consistent number now if you run out and buy a bottle of this a bottle of that you're buying fos x you're buying <coughs> all these different nutrients absorbers you're buying two part three part four part strontium you're dosing all of these things you're not testing it all you're doing is spending money 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 and that equals a unhappy reefer all your money is going out the window and so are your hopes and dreams so what you want to do is take your time don't kill your fish don't throw a lot of money out the window on chemicals that you don't need because all you will do in the long run is end up with a tank full of dead corals. <laughs> now, we don't want dead corals. And most importantly, we don't want a whole bunch of tanks on Craigslist. You know why they end up on Craigslist? Because people get frustrated, they spend a lot of money, they get dead fish, they have dead coral, and they end up throwing all these tanks on Craigslist. And no, I don't want to buy your tanks because I already have a ton of tanks from the last guys that threw all their tanks on Craigslist. So I just want to wrap it up by saying we want all you guys to be happy. Nothing does my heart better than seeing you guys videos where you've hit the bottom, you've come back up, you've learned a few things. And at the end of the day, mistakes are the best teacher but by taking your time and making fewer mistakes you can end up with a tank that does well you don't have to have a thousand pieces of coral and best because you see people on videos that have thousands of pieces of coral and they're doing great doesn't mean that they did it overnight it took time it took work it took balance and it took most important a little bit of discipline the coral are happy the fish are happy and guess what if the fish are happy the coral are happy the tank is happy guess what you will be happy 
Now, I hope you can bear with me because I'm not an animator. I'm not the best artist in the world. But if you can understand this and this is you and you are happy, that means I'm doing something right. So thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you uh, didn't uh, think I rambled on. I just try my best to explain things as best I can so that people do well in the hobby and oh man did I just write what I think I wrote boy see I told you I wasn't a good artist uh yeah I spelled four wrong I'll get back to that <laughs> thank you guys for watching click the subscribe button uh ring the bell and the subscribe button should be down here in the little corner with the subscribe written on it and if you just take your time man just take your time do your due diligence click subscribe i'm gonna go into the next portion which will be calcium and i hope this guys helps you out if you're starting out if it doesn't if you have any questions post them in the comments below and i will try my best to address them as i fix my poor penmanship sorry mrs nussbaum my english teacher i bet she's not happy right now but till next time see you